Um, so I've thought pretty long so far already about what my game of the year is going to be for 2020. It's not that I haven't played fewer games this year, but there just haven't been a lot of um, <clears throat> traditional game releases, you could say. Um, there's still three more months till the end of the year, so something absolutely amazing, mind-blowing could still come out. But I'm not really holding any, holding my breath on that. Uh, I just want to take a quick rundown of the games that I've purchased physically this year to talk about who's in the running. Uh, digital download games are, of course, always in the running for Game of the Year, but it does tend to be a physical game that is the winner, so I just want to go through the list that I have here. Okay, got my props. We have Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games, Tokyo 2020. Uh, new Super Lucky's Tale, uh, the limited run physical copy of 2064 Read Only Memories. Uh, let's see, we have Animal Crossing New Horizons, uh, Blossom Tales, The Sleeping King, also a physical limited run release. Uh, the game we're talking about today, Clubhouse Games. 51 Worldwide Classics. Dragon Quest XI-S Echoes of an Elusive Age Definitive Edition, also known as, I swear, the longest English title of all time. And finally, the recently purchased Paper Mario The Origami King. And like I mentioned in the last segment, I will also be receiving sooner than later uh, Super Mario 3D All-Stars. Uh, I can't imagine that a collection is going to be my game of the year, but we'll see. Uh, and like I said, there's plenty of digital games that I've purchased. Like, uh, I recently got The Stretchers, which is also a, uh, an independent game published by Nintendo. And Sega Ages Puzzle in Action Ichi Dot R, which I've quite enjoyed for what it is, I want to point out. Um, and then there's a couple more games that I've uh, planned to get, like Puyo Puyo Tetris 2. Probably not going to be the game of the year, if only because I, it seems like it's going to be very similar to the original Puyo Puyo Tetris, which was a, a fantastic game in its own right, um, but also was not my 2017 game of the year when it had to compete with Super Mario Odyssey. Uh, I've also recently pre-ordered Untitled Goose Game from Skybound Games, so that will be in the running as well. Uh, at the end of the year, I plan to discuss um, what my game of the year is going to be, because everybody does. Um, and I'm also going to talk about, well, Bryn, why are you including games from, like, past years that aren't 2020 in that segment? Because to me, there's always a personal game of the year, uh, alongside the game of the year 2020 in this case. Uh, but the sad thing this, yeah, about this year is, um, to this point, uh, the game of the year might end up being Clubhouse Games 51 Worldwide Classics. Now, don't get me wrong. I really 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 like this game in fact let's put it like this i put more hours into clubhouse games in two months than i put into new horizons or animal crossing new horizons in six months i mean i would imagine that i'm a very small minority thinking that it could be deserving game of the year crown and like having played it that much but you know i'm just saying i liked it a lot but let's give an objective ish review here. Uh, like the last time, I want to give this game a uh, review using certain metrics. Uh, the same ones that I used for New Horizons. How is the game's premise? Uh, how does the presentation hold up? What is the gameplay like? And then finally, what sorts of things would I add, change, or get rid of? Uh, let's start with the premise this time. Um, and like I said with New Horizons, every game has a story but like with it, I think Clubhouse Games is better represented by the idea of a premise because it's what get it's it's what's getting you to play into the game. Is there isn't necessarily a story that you're following along. Um, in this case, Clubhouse Games Fifty One Worldwide Classics has somewhat of a story in the background because each of the Fifty One games and the piano toy uh, have a cutscene that plays out with a little little toy figurine family. Um, playing the game or giving a brief tutorial if it's a complicated sort of game. So it's like the players are living among this family and seeing their level card games, board games, 
fun stuff like slot cars, golf, pool, aka billiards. Um, but regardless, the basic premise is simply that. You are playing tabletop games, toys, sports, with a CPU friend or friends, uh, or with your real-world family. Uh, now, when it comes to the presentation, Clubhouse Games is really pretty. It is gorgeous. I cannot tell you the frame rate or the resolution, because they're not exactly aspects that I've seen discussed anywhere. Um, if I knew, I would tell you, but I just don't. But suffice it to say, the 51 games have amazing detail, and they run smoothly, at least in my experience in single player. Um, like when I look at the yacht dice board, or even just any of the card game tables, I, feel, I can feel the texture of the felt just from seeing it. Uh, there's like marbles used in uh, Nine Men's Morris, and they give off this amazing celestial glow. Uh, you can see the wood underneath. It looks like it was cut from... Okay, well, <laughs> I was going to say it looks like it was cut from a real tree, but I don't I don't know if the game quite looks that good. Um, but suffice it to say, the visuals are superb. Um, and what's neat, too, is that the developers made sure to include like little background objects so that you're reminded, hey, this is still a, like a real house you're playing in. So like there's a coffee cup around the Battle Tanks arena, and the Team Tanks one as well, I'm fairly confident. Um, and then you can just barely see your opponent's, like, the, the chair that your opponent would be sitting in in uh, Toy Tennis. Uh, where I've encountered some frame rate stutters, though, and where the presentation obviously kind of falters, is in playing online. Um, it isn't obviously as big of a problem with something where you're playing in turns, like in Last Card, or Ludo, or Chinese Checkers. But as you can imagine, playing golf and billiards are much harder when I have to catch up to where I'm tilting the stick. Like, like I'm planning it that the stick, or the, the indicator, is moving as I'm tilting the stick. And instead it's like, it moves way over here! And now I'm like, wait, 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 I have to correct it, and it's just a pain. Ah, uh, goodness, let's see. Uh, I need to get up a list of all 51 games, because I just kind of want to do a lightning round review of each uh, game included, not including the piano. I don't know how to play the piano, so I could never, ever give a fair um, review of that. Here's a list of all 51 games. I believe these are in the same order as they're shown in the game. I'm just reading them right off of the website. There is Mancala, which is a new game for me. Uh, I'd never really truly seriously played it until I played Clubhouse Games. I really like it. Um, there's like some strategy, kind of not some strategy. It feels like it's a very one-sided game, uh, but I enjoy it. Dots and Boxes the classic pen and paper game. Uh, CPU's too hard on that thing, I swear, because, you know, either you tie or you get lucky and win, if you win at all. Uh, Yacht Dice is Yahtzee, or at least the equivalent. Yahtzee's obviously the branded Hasbro version of the game. It's fine. I'm not a big fan of uh, the game. Oh, excuse me. Why am I putting my hand over my mouth? Uh, I'm not a massive fan of Yacht Dice, if only because I hate randomness like that. But it's it's okay. Four in a row, again, it's Connect Four. Uh, coming back to that game as an adult, there's a shocking level of strategy in Four in a Row. Like, there's a shocking amount of, I have to make sure I put these pieces in the right spots that you just don't get when you're a kid. Hit and Blow, I hear, is similar to this game Mastermind. I'd never played it until this. I think it's okay, but I, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just not smart enough to get how I'm supposed to get the pattern when there's multiple of the same color. Uh, Nine Men's Morris is dumb because either you, like, it seems like you're almost, it's, well, I... I <laughs> I was going to say, you either win or you lose, but that's every game. Um, it's so ridiculously easy to lose, though, I find. Because the whole idea is supposed to be like, you go back and forth and back and forth between groups of three, and 
or you've just happened to like block spots, but then you can't make lines of three and take your opponent's marbles, and I don't like it. Hex plane doesn't make sense to me. Like, I can't, I, I don't know if I just can't map out the line properly in my head to build a line, but also block my opponent from building a line. It's okay. Uh, I, it's definitely not the first game I play. Checkers, checkers, it's a perennial game. Uh, I like it over chess because I don't get chess. Uh, hare and hounds is pretty dumb because the hounds can only move forward, so the hare almost always has a guaranteed advantage and almost always wins. Uh, Gomaku, I actually quite enjoy Gomaku. It's like Connect Four, but you have you get the, a whole grid board available to you, uh, and you have to uh, line up five. But there's so many times where it's just like I could not. You can't see a move coming, and it's just, it's a game that I have to get better at strategically. Dominoes, I like classic. Don't care for five up. Those are the two modes included. I don't really understand five up. It's like you have to like end. Uh, the end pieces have to add up to a multiple of five, so you get five points. But you have to get either sixty-one or thirty-one points. It's weird. Uh, whereas classic is simply whoever gets rid of their dominoes wins points based on how many dots were left on the remaining player's dominoes. Chinese checkers is neat. It's one of the only three-player games in Clubhouse. Uh, it's also a game that I had never really played until I picked up this collection. Um, I enjoy it. I don't think it's a ga uh, game I would really like as a board game because I can't, you know, I, I like having the, like, reticle to show, hey, you can jump all the way out here by jumping over all of these, which I wouldn't see if I were playing the board game because <laughs> I'm bad at visualization, I guess. Ludo is sorry, but better. I hate the board game sorry with a passion because it's so random whereas ludo i mean sure in ludo you have to roll a die and you have to get a six to move a care up a, a pawn out of the home but i don't know i just, i just like it better although it takes forever uh backgammon is neat um i'm bad at it online um but when you're playing against the cpu i, I just think it's fun especially when um i like trying to send my opponent back to the start. I don't know. I don't know if I have a very good strategy at it or not, but it's just fun. Renegade uh, is Othello. And uh, this is pointed out on the Completely Unnecessary podcast. It is so hard to make an actually good Othello CPU. And when I say that, I don't mean a CPU that is good at the game. I mean one that can give a reasonable challenge because apparently either it plays totally randomly if it's supposed to be easy or it's a master at the game and i love and hate renegade because of that chess i have not played chess i have not played shogi i have not played mini shogi i have not played anafuda i have not played richi mahjong i won't give reviews on those because they're just too complicated of games and i'm sorry that i've never played chess or mahjong or hanafuda uh last card is uno basically it's good it's, I feel like it's probably the game that I would start the most on here if, if I were to boot the game up. Um, but it comes with all the trappings that Uno has and that it, there's a, a lot of randomness in that. Oh, come on, I just need that one color. Or, <gasps> you play the number I needed and now I can change everything on you. In that sense, it's not super fair, but it's fun. Blackjack, one of the few four-player one-console games. It's fine, but blackjack is all random, and you have to hope that you're betting well. Texas Hold'em, I'm not a serious gambler by any means, so I can't really tell you how well it compares to something like a like a TV poker game, like a TV show series poker like my dad watches or something turned into a video game, um, but it's fine. I, I don't play it very often. President is low-key one of the highlights of this game. I really want to play it in real life, but I never have, like, four people around to play it, and they'd probably think it's dumb. Um, I wish I could figure out how to explain the game, other than just I think it's fun, but I recommend that you go download the Clubhouse Games Guest Pass because that is one of the free four games included in it. Sevens is also fun. Basically, you have to get all of the cards out in numeric order 
uh, in a row on it, starting with, because seven's the middle card of uh, the deck out of the 13. And it's, ah, uh, the thing I like about it is I'm kind of evil <laughs> in that I will pass until I absolutely cannot pass any longer because you get a limited number of passes in sevens uh, just so I can hopefully get the other players to have to bust and lay out all of their cards and then I can win. Uh, speed is speed, you know, you get three cards, there's two piles in the middle and you have to deal out yours quicker. So if there's a six out on one of the piles in the middle and you have a seven, you have to get that out before your opponent puts out their seven or their five or their joker or whatever. Uh, matching is matching. You can't really screw that up. It's fine. War is dumb because it's all random and you have to hope you get a higher card. Takoyaki, even though it is also all random, I think is pretty fun. Basically, you have to get 1 through 10 and you start with a deck in the middle and you keep drawing cards and whoever gets all 10 first wins, including uh, jokers are useful, which adds at least a little bit of strategy to the game uh, because you have to... Uh, I can't think of the word. Uh, you kind of have to watch make sure, okay, are like all of the twos gone? I better put that in my two spot, for example. Pig's Tail is also kind of neat, um, but I feel like it's kind of marred by the fact that one player is almost inevitably going to get screwed at the end, uh, because basically you have to take the, like you, the, the cards are laid out in a curl, and you have to lay them out, and if two of the same suit are drawn, you have to take all the middle, and you have to hope that, I mean, you can take your cards that you've had like if you had to take the cards from the middle and they're starting and they're continuing you can use the ones that you've pulled and get rid of them and whoever has the least cards at the end wins um golf is golf i like that it's the nes holes i wish it was more than three clubs so i could have a little bit more control over what happens but it's fine uh billiards is also a highlight i like all three variations of the game honestly just even simple Get all the balls in the hole. Get five before your opponent does is really fun. Bowling. <sighs> I'm a bowler in real life, fun fact. Um, the ball is a lot more accurate to real life in this game. Pins, for some reason, are super hard to get accurate. But it's fun. It's bowling. I wish it was four players, though. Darts, I've not really... I think I've played it once, and I played it in touchscreen, and that was okay. Carom is another low-key highlight. Um, I'd never played it before. Um, basically, you have to get all of your colored discs into all the pockets and get the queen and make sure that you get the queen in before you get all of your coin, your color coins. Um, and when you do that and you get all your coins and you win. Toy tennis is like tennis, but super limited. And in that sense, it's okay, but... It's just a toy and not very sufficient. Uh, let's see what else. There's just a few more, few more games on here. Let's see. Uh, the next one should be uh, Toy Soccer. That's foosball, but like kind of limited. Um, it's okay. It reminds me a lot of the Toy Soccer in Wii Party, which makes sense because this game was developed by ND Cube, which also made Wii Party, or excuse me, Wii Party U on the Wii U. Um, again, it's okay. I'm not a big soccer person, but, you know, I, it's also it's not, it's not a game I would pick first. Toy Curling is kind of neat. I wish it was more like actual curling and that you had, like, little tiny people with the little broom, but instead you just kind of shoot out the... The curling stones like pucks, and it's neat. Toy boxing is just rock'em sock'em robots, but even simpler in that you punch or you block. I'm pretty sure this is also a mini game in Wii Party U on the gamepad, but I could be wrong. I mean, it's fine. It may as well be similar wrestling, but it's fine. Toy baseball is neat, but I don't know. It seems like the AI is very strong in that game, and it's hard to get past the the third level of CPU. Um, air hockey's neat. It's air hockey. I wish you could... I wish there were pointer controls for it, not unlike um, the minigame in We Play with the laser hockey. Uh, slot cars is cool. I especially enjoy the mosaic mode version of it where you get to like design your own track. Um, I wish I had four switches around to try it with, but it's still fun. 
I haven't played fishing. Are there any more on here I haven't played? Uh, no, I don't think so. Battle tanks is okay. I would imagine it's more fun with an actual human being. Um, but it's fine. You get to, you get a couple different arenas to beat up each other on. Definitely not as good as Wii tanks, so you get to point at each other with the pointer and use a stick, and we play. Uh, team tanks is a lot lamer, because again, it's similar to Wii play tanks in that you're going up against CPU tanks in a few stages, but there's a whole three stages as opposed to the Wii plays, 100. Uh, shooting gallery is a shooting gallery. I like the stages, it's fine, it's fun. Uh, I have found that with the pointer version, with the Joy-Con, the pointer gets way off very easily, though, and that's something that needs improving. Uh, Six-ball puzzle is also okay. It's apparently the same as a Mario Party 9 minigame. Um, my guess is they just wanted to include it to get another uh, game in there. Again, it's fine, but I just I can't. Kind of like Puyo Puyo, I can't see that far ahead when I'm stacking things. Sliding puzzle, I hate. I have not gotten to the rabbit version of the stage. I just, again, I can't. I, I have a hard time envisioning things. Mahjong Solitaire is just Windows Mahjong, which I, you know, I hate to say it, but I'm that low-key casual guy who much prefers Mahjong Solitaire. Uh, Klondike Solitaire is Solitaire, again, like Windows Solitaire. It's pretty neat. It's fun, but again, those are all just basic games. Spider Solitaire is fun. I just like one suit, personally. Again, I just like it making making it easy on myself. Because it's fun just to win. Don't hate. Uh, and I don't know how to play the piano. But I'm sure it's a totally fine uh, tool. That's all of the games. I don't know if those are great reviews, but I didn't want to take, uh, you know... 30 minutes to review every single individual little game in detail. Uh, so let's hopefully close this off here with what would I add, change, or get rid of with this game because I feel it is important to include your concerns and suggestions. Uh, in addition, I would make more local single console multiplayer options because only two games can be played on one console with four players, Blackjack and Ludo. Uh, why can't four players bowl on one console? You could do it in Wii Sports in 2006. Why can't four players do the top-down golf on one console? Like, obviously, I get why you need to have four Switch consoles for, like, Richie Mahjong and President and Sevens, all games that require you to have a hand that you can see. Um, and like I said, there's the special uh, Clubhouse Games Guest Pass app uh, with four games and, and the ability to connect with a full game for these exact sort of hand-based uh, games. I'd also be interested in seeing more mosaic mode games uh, because the mosaic mode options we have are pretty neat. I believe it's fishing, piano, uh, slot cars, and god there's one I'm missing. Uh, which one is it? Uh, slot cars, fishing, piano, battle tanks. I'm pretty sure it's no, Team Tanks, excuse me. I'm pretty confident it's Team Tanks. There might be one I'm missing, but I'm, I know for sure those ones. Um, why doesn't Dots and Boxes get an extended playing field in Mosaic Mode? Or um, an even bigger sliding puzzle with two consoles? That could be neat. I mean, those are basic additions, but they, I mean, to be fair, the team used uh, what they could out of Mosaic Mode pretty well. Uh, I'm struggling to come up with any, like, extraneous features that I would get rid of. If I had to choose one, I would probably go with the Guide Globe feature. Um, and I get why it's a feature, in, but it's the thing I've used the least in my experience. Um, I've looked at the Guide Globe a few times just for funsies, and I'm sure there are players who like comparing, like, here are other players around the world and the games they like and their favorite foods and whatever and their records, but, you know, I just... And it didn't really add a ton of the experience to me. I could take it or leave it and still be happy. Uh, so, But uh, I would have to say I like Clubhouse Games 51 Worldwide Classics a lot, and I'm not ashamed to admit that it could be my game of the year. Uh, if I had to give it a numeric rating, I'm leaning toward like a 9 out of 10. I don't really like number ratings. I like those descriptive, like, I loved it. I thought it was great. 
I liked it a lot. I thought it was pretty neat sort of things. I mean, for 40 bucks, it's a neat little package, even with the multiplayer shortcomings that I mentioned, but it can still satisfy you for tens, maybe even hundreds of hours, especially with the online component. Even with the issues that the game has playing online with the lag, um, I've still found even months in. You can easily, easily get into a game, and it's it's just fun. It's good, clean, wholesome board gamey fun and I couldn't ask for much more than that now can I so we are halfway through this podcast we have two more topics to go next up let's get very summary and talk about some amusement park memories <music> 